Welcome to lecture 14. In today's lecture, we will apply the variational principle to determine the ground state energy of quantum systems using trial wave functions. This lecture will be broken down into two parts. In the first part, we will introduce what is a secular determinant, as it will be used in the near future to solve for unknowns in systems of equations. In the second part, we will introduce the variational principle and use it to solve the ground state energy of quantum systems using trial wave functions. Recall that beyond the hydrogen atom, it isn't currently possible to solve the Schrodinger equation analytically. Before we can get into solving these complicated quantum systems, we need to introduce a linear algebra concept, the determinant. Consider a series of equations that share a common set of variables, meaning a11 times x plus a12 times y being equal to some number d1, and a second equation a21 times x plus a22 times y is equal to some other number d2. And in this case, we're letting the a's and the d's be equal to constants. In this example, we will use x and y as our independent variables that we are trying to determine. And in this case, we have two unknowns and two equations, so we can solve for x and y. One way to solve for x, for example, involves multiplying the top equation by the constant a22 and the bottom by a12. This gives a11 a22 times x plus a12 a22 times y being equal to d1 times a22. And the second equation gives a12 times a21x plus a12 a22 times y and that's equal to d2 times a12. The next step is to take the bottom equation and subtract it from the top equation. And if we do that, we get the left-hand side of the first equation being a11a22x plus a12a22y minus the left-hand side of the second equation being a12a21x plus a12a22y. And all that is equal to d1a22 minus d2a12. In the subtraction on the left-hand side, the terms that relate to y are the same, and they both cancel out. We can then rearrange what's left and solve for x, giving x being equal to d1a22 minus d2a12, and that's over a11a22 minus a12 times a21. A similar procedure can be done to solve for y, giving y being equal to d1a21 minus d2a11, and that's over a11a22 minus a12a21. And in both these solutions, the denominator is the same. This denominator has a special name called a determinant. The notation on the left expresses the constants as a matrix, a 2 by 2 in our case, and the vertical lines to the left and right. When the constants are expressed as a matrix, the determinant is determined by multiplying the elements along the diagonals and subtracting them. For this course, we're going to solve systems of equations that are homogeneous, meaning that the d's are going to equal zero. This changes our generic system of equations to be a11x plus a12y being equal to zero and a21x plus a22y being equal to zero. The solutions for x and y can now be written as a11a22 minus a12a21 all times x is equal to 0 times a22 minus 0 times a12 and a11a22 minus a12a21 all times y is equal to 0 times a21 minus 0 times a11. The right-hand side of both of these solutions is equal to zero. And for x and y to yield a non-trivial solution, meaning they aren't equal to zero themselves, the other part of the left-hand side, the determinant involving the constants, must equal zero. In other words, a11a22 minus a12a21 has to be equal to zero. This type of determinant is known as a secular determinant. This example of calculating a secular determinant is meant to mimic what we will see later when we apply this concept to quantum systems. When we solve for those systems, we will actually be trying to solve for an unknown, which is a part of the a constant terms, 
using the secular determinant. This will be illustrated in this following example, where we have a system of equations where we have 1 minus e times x plus 4 minus e times y, all equal to 0, and 2 minus e times x plus 3 minus e times y, and that's also equal to 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to invoke the fact that there must be a secular determinant because we know, or we have to presume that x and y are non-trivial. We want to get numbers for them and not zeros. And what we're going to do then is we're going to solve for this common constant e that appears in all of these a constant terms. So to solve for this, we're going to write down our constants as a series or as a matrix where we're going to have our terms 1 minus e, we have 4 minus e to finish off that first row, 2 minus e from the second equation, and 3 minus e, and we're going to bound it inside these horizontal, or sorry, these vertical lines onto the left and right. And we know that that's equal to, if we write it out as an algebraic expression, we have 1 minus e times 3 minus e, and that's subtracted from 4 minus e times 2 minus e. And because we're saying that this is a secular determinant, then we can let that equal to 0. My next step is to FOIL out these two terms. And so what I'm going to get is 3 minus 3e minus e plus e squared. And from that, I'm going to be subtracting off 8 minus 2e minus 4e plus e squared. And that's still equal to 0. When I can start to cross off terms, I have a plus e squared here. This minus sign will distribute in, and that'll cancel out that term. I have a 3 minus 8, and so I'm left with minus 5. And I have minus 3e, minus e is minus 4. And from that, I'm going to add 6e. And so what I'm going to be left with is plus 2e. And that's all still equal to 0. And so when I solve for e, I find that e is equal to 5 over 2. For this example, we aren't going to solve for x and y, as our main focus was to basically practice evaluating these secular determinants. But what you should take away from this example is that in our preamble, we actually have two equations, and we have three unknowns. And so by invoking this property that if x and y are going to give you non-trivial solutions in a homogeneous system of equations, then you must have a secular determinant, which is what we stated down here. So this, in essence, creates a third equation, thereby fully defining the problem, and allows us to solve for all three unknowns. This is going to allow us to fully determine approximate wave functions of complex quantum systems.